Hello and welcome to another episode of Business and Bubble Tea. Here on the podcast today, I am so excited to have with us Robert Wu from Big One Lab in China. Uh, Robert, uh, it's fantastic to have you on the podcast with us today. Thank you, thank you, William. Thank you,、uh, thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Robert from Big One Lab. I'm、uh, mostly based in Shanghai,、uh, traveling a, a lot in China as well. Can you tell、yeah. us a little bit more of、uh, Big One Lab, like a short、yeah. introduction? Yeah, sure. So we were,、uh, we are a、um, alternative data research and analytics company. We were founded in 2016.、Um, we serve institutional、uh, investors,、uh, hedge funds, private equity funds, venture capital funds, as well as corporates、uh, around the world. But we focus on China. We provide. Uh, you know, China-centered、uh, data and research products to help these clients to make decisions、uh, in their investment and businesses. Brilliant.、Well, and, and I just wanted to ask a bit about. So, you're the CEO of of Big One Lab. How、mm-hmm. how do you see your role、um, as as CEO?、Um, what is what what makes your Um, you're, you're an effective CEO, shall we say? Right.、Uh, so actually, you know, I, I'm. A, I would say I'm like an accidental CEO. I, I never set out <laughs> to be.、Um, you're too you humble. <laughs> no, no. Because when I when I joined the company, it's just the the the, the, the businesses that I'm interested in. That you know, the research part,、yep. how to convert data into insights and all that that interests me. Um, there's a lot of things happen that、uh, we we had a kind of reorganization at our firm、um, that I I step in and I step up、yeah. um, to to be the CEO.、Uh, I never train myself to be that,、uh, but later I just quickly learn to how to how to do that.、Um, mm-hmm. So so that could be kind of perspective,、uh, a kind of、yeah. another perspective. It's it's not the same with someone who say, oh, I want to you know found some company and I want to you know. Lee and as a、yeah. CEO from the very beginning, as I think I'm one of the few cases, more rare、yeah. cases. But I think you know after you know time doing this,、uh, I do have something to share.、Um, yeah. You know, you know because I, I haven't been a CEO in, like in abroad in other countries. I can really just tell from my own experiences, right? So, really so I think yeah. To know so, about so, in China so, especially. Right, right. So I think in, in China's context, just I, I I read a lot. I read you know books、mm-hmm. written by、uh, you know Silicon Valley people, for example, or like these classic、uh, management books, just really to help myself. Right, I, I really need some、yeah. help from from the、uh, from the a bit of Peter Thiel or something like that might help. <laughs> yeah, a little bit around that, like you know, hard thing about hard things along that kind of track. You know, yeah, some kind yeah. of must read, right? So I do have time to compare, right? To compare the theory and the facts, you know, on, on the realities on the ground here. So I think there are some uh, uh, similarities,、um, and also I think I think the biggest thing, the biggest challenge is how to you know consume、uh, all the information,、uh, all kinds of information, all the noises、uh, mm. in China, and and to really make decisions. Um, you stick to、uh, you know, your core strength.、Uh, you have to define what, what are you、yeah. you are good at. You know who you are,、um, and that's I think that's I think that's true for every business around the world, but especially in China because the Chinese culture、uh, centers a lot on you know、uh, conformity,、uh, mm-hmm. centers a lot on crowd wisdom.、Uh, yep. So so that can give you a sense of、um, you know when people. You know, tend to follow the herd in in, in、mm-hmm. some way, and follow the herd is good. It's okay. There's、yep. a trend. It's a good trend. You have to follow it,、um, but you cannot just follow it. You know, without ever thinking about it, without ever thinking about you know who you really are, what you're good at,、yep. right? So, so you do see a lot of businesses in China. They were like, you know, there's something hot right now. Like say,、uh, ChatGPT is hot.、Yep. So like. You know, maybe Open AI all over. Some, yeah, yeah. So then <laughs> let's let's just look, pour everything into it.、Um, yep. You know, this you know in in, in Chinese, "追风 you know, follow the wind is、mm-hmm. is a big thing.、Uh, it's not bad per se. It's just 
you know, it, it's hard to stay your course to define mm. what's your specific strategy, who you really are, what you're good at, what you want to achieve, and communicate that well to mostly to the team, to the customers, to the shareholders. Uh, I think that's the that's the challenge. I mean, you, you, you know, any you know, anyone who wants to be the CEO have to have this kind of um, kind of you know both the, the the time and energy to consume all this data yep. into your head, and also the kind of the stamina to make a decision, um, yep. and 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 a decision that can last. And also, and also it's it's important to uh, you know to admit mistakes. Uh, I think also yep. that's that's also kind of against the Chinese culture in some way because there's also this thing about the face, you know. Yeah, some losing CEOs, face, this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some some things I know, you know, tend not to adapt that well to, you know, you know, these kind of situations where they made a mistake. Um, and but that's something we have to fight against. That kind of tendency mm -hmm. we have to always fight against. So so I think um, yeah, and and that whole thing will just make you super anxious. Um, and so at the end of the day, you have to find a way to fight that as well, right? Stay healthy, yeah. do some exercises, sleep well, <laughs> eat well. Uh, yeah, so, so you know, really have balance. to have a kind of a good balance. Yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned, I guess, I guess it's filtering, filtering out the noise around you mm -hmm. and then having mm -hmm. a, 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 clear, a clear vision. How do mm -hmm. you, uh, and you mentioned a bit about knowing what you're good at and what you do. How yeah. do you determine determine that how as a ceo how do you determine the direction right. of travel right yeah so uh, it's it's really a com so first of all we have to start from you know start by looking at ourselves myself mm -hmm. and also look at ourselves of the team um you know there is some setup and there, there's some you know naturally people just like cluster around people who are more like each other so in our case, uh, you know, our fundamental business model is to turn, you know, big amount of data or even non-structured information into uh, insights, into useful information, right? Yep. So that's something that clearly the, the, the thing that we're doing, you can call it information services. We, we are situated in this yep. bigger information services. Uh, we help people to understand. We help people to answer questions, right? So. It, it's, it was not so well defined, uh, you know, in the previous years, but still we, we, everyone that joins does have this kind of rough feeling. So you already have this mm -hmm. kind of cluster of people, like-minded people already. Yep. Um, so it, it takes, what it takes is uh, communication within, and what it takes is actual, uh, you, know, you know, doing the job, you know, various products and projects but you need to have some time to sit down and kind of, you know, kind of, kind of summarize, kind of deduce, you know, the commonality of the project. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on my yeah. side, every weekend I will spend like half a day to just to to kind of go through what I've been through over the whole week, um, like the the projects, the the client calls, um, the internal meetings, and yeah. trying to you know parse out what's common. And then I will turn that into some kind of dialogue with my colleagues in the next week. So, mm -hmm. so, so it's more like a consensus building, right? You, you, you take out something common and, and you go out there and, and, and check. So, so that's yeah. how we, we kind of produce, keep producing new things uh, along, you know, our core strength. No, uh, I, I think, I think the reason you find that me is one of the reasons that you saw our newsletter. Uh, the the, yeah. the Bai Guan, <laughs> Bai Guan right? absolutely, so, yeah, right, yeah, your co-editor. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was like, you know, I, I we did some a lot of these. You know, actually, actually, we didn't do that before. We don't have experience with that before. We were like serving institutional mm -hmm. clients, you know, doing all yep. this, um, you know, pretty heavy products and projects, right? Uh, but at some point, you know, we we are you know talking with some clients who. You know, who are genuinely interested in China, who really want to know more, but who doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to spend, say, a hundred thousand, you know, dollar per mm -hmm. year or per project to get this pretty dense package. But they do have yep. the, the the demand, and there's genuinely a kind of gap between, you know, China and abroad. So, mm -hmm. 
So, so, so we think, okay, why now? What, 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 if we're providing information services, you know, we want to serve as many people as possible. Why don't we, you know, make it lighter, make it more, you know, chill and, and, and have a more, you know, flexible form. So, so yeah. that's, uh, you know, that's after we know who we are and we kind of transform into something new, right? So, and we test that. So that's so, the uh, example. What can we find on the Baiguan newsletter? What are the, the hot topic right now in, in China that you're seeing? Right. Right. So, so this, the, this, this news, newsletter we work on is, um, it does have some, uh, you know, key strength that provided by Big One Lab, which is really data driven. Um, mm -hmm. we, we draw on our own data sets, like, you know, online data, offline data, macro data. Uh, but also I think one key area is context. I think a lot of, uh, our, I think, you know, what, you know, when we work with the, the clients, the institutional clients we work with, um, a lot of struggles they had recently in the recent years is like this loss of touch with the context. Uh, because of the macro changes, policy yep. changes, geopolitical changes, right? Uh, you used to view Chinese companies listed overseas as just one of the other companies, right? You, you, you view it as a stock and you analyze yep. their reports, results, and then you follow the transcript. You think it's one of the other, any companies, but it's not. It's Chinese company and it's w operating within the China context. Um, so, so I think, you know, if you go through the newsletter, it's actually a mixture of data driven, uh, reports as well as, you know, context, contextual, uh, kind of description of, um, of policy changes, you know, what's really mm -hmm. behind the policy changes, um, societal, um, sentiments, uh, you know, social, uh, you know, what really do Chinese people think about certain things? How do they behave? So that's more like that. So and, and, and what's, yeah. And, and yeah. what's a super important, I guess you mentioned context a lot. Yeah. Um, how do you establish the first steps, I guess, to understanding the, chi the Chinese context for individual uh, companies listed overseas? What's the sort of starting point? Uh, I think that, that, that's a, that's a good question because, because I'm Chinese. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I am situated in, in, in China, like from yeah. the very beginning. Um, how do I, how do we start? Um, I mean, for, I think this is a difficult question for me because, because I start like here. Uh, but yeah. if I would have to give an advice, I would highly suggest anyone who had a, you know, what, for our newsletter, we define our reader as anyone who have a stake in China. So mm -hmm. either equity stake, private equity investment, or, you know, have a business operation in China or have a career in China or have a, even a like intellectual stake in China. Anyone who has a stake in China, my first advice is come to China. Uh, you don't, you don't invest in a place where you don't have even a single, you know, Kind of uh, personal experience of, yeah, right. If your if your conception of this country is built by, you know, Wall Street Journal and New York Times, mm. and you, you use that to, you know, as your basis for investing, that's definitely no. not going to go anywhere, right? So you need to have that. Let, you have to invest in something you understand, right? That's super interesting. Yeah. I just want to frame it maybe in the context of um. I don't know how much you know about the China automotive sector, but right. if you're just looking at companies like Xiaopeng or Nia yeah. that mm -hmm. um, are listed overseas and mm -hmm. are currently, I guess, engaging in, in Europe, uh, in, in, yeah. the, in the Nordics, how, yeah. what would, I guess, what would your starting point be for, for understanding them, let's say? Yeah. So uh, you, I think, I think the, the biggest part, I mean, we also mentioned that in, in our newsletter before is you have to, you know, for, for the Chinese people, you have to treat it as for, not first as an automotive. It's not a, like a machine. Mm -hmm. It's a consumer product, right? Okay. Um, for, for them to, for any of the brand to succeed, you have to succeed as a consumer product. So that's why there have been some big surprises. Uh, for example, uh, there's this Lee Auto, uh, yep. you know, it's, you know, a lot of the tech geeks, they don't like the auto. They, it's, it's, they're not famous for having 
cool technology. And they're actually, their technology looks, sounds stupid. It's a combination yeah. of, they, they, they have a, like an ICE internal combustion engine and they use that to power the battery. Um, but it has, does have some longer range, but it's just not a very elegant solution. Uh, but what they are good at is they are really good at defining their product. Um, they are targeting big families, uh, you know, dad with two kids, uh, you know, big uh, space, uh, home, yeah. like home style st- 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 stereos and all that. Um, then they have a major thing about that. And they know there's this big group over there in that price range that really have demand for that kind of product. So it turns out out of all these new brands, Li Auto is actually the best selling brand. Compared with say Xiaopeng you mentioned, Xiaopeng is actually not doing that well right now in China. They're, 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 they're trying to catch up. Uh, they focus a lot on technology, uh, like being smart driving technology. But although they're, they're, their technology is not like the best in the world, but it's still like compared with the Chinese peers, it's one of the best. But it's not like substantially better. But then in terms of the brand building, in terms of you know consumer product, they are kind of lagging behind. So, so it's um, you know, I think that's that's the key uh, key thing here. It's it's not like technology product; it's a consumer product. So you have to understand consumer dynamic, consumer sentiments in order to to understand the market as a beginning. Yeah. You see this also in other industries here in China. Um, at Big One Lab, do you focus only on this specific like automotive industry, or also on others? And do you see the same trends? Right. We, we cover almost all aspects of a consumer behavior, um, be it, you know, online purchases, offline dining, it, it, stuff like that. Um, and, and we, we use both data and our personal anecdotal experience combined to provide our uh, viewpoints into, you know, different uh, segments. Um, and, and yes, there are a lot of, um, you know, to be frank, Chinese economy right now is at a uncertain kind of uh, stage, right? Is the, the growth, everyone is looking for growth, but the growth is not yet there. There's some big rebound over last year, but then it kind of stagnates for now. So I think yep. the key here now is to look for uh, these niche areas of growth. So, so for example, uh, you know, the coffee industry, the outdoor uh, sports industry, you know, all these little pockets of behavior and, and also the behaviors of the younger generation. Um, you know, th- there's been uh, more and more of these uh, new areas that are being explored. And so, so the focus really now is to get down to those details, these micro levels, you know, when people like consume coffee, for example, uh, what really are interested in them. Right? We did a piece of Luckin Coffee. It's really mm. fast growing one. Um, they went through all these big stick scandal, but survived. And it turns out, you know, they're not really a purely coffee company. Their best selling products are all these a kind of, kind of a mixture of coffee and bubble tea. Oh, it's yeah. the same name as, as, as yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so it's more like these, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, drinks, not really coffee mm. with some coffee element make you, uh, so, 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 so it's a lot of, a lot of localization, a lot of, innovation over there and that's you know our job is to find these nuances yeah. do you see this in and the main cities like in the tr cities the, or is it happening also in other in like yeah TRCs? i think that's a good question the different tiers different regions are also the one of the complexities of china and that's something you know i think people who never been to china will not understand the you know I have this theory. The dialect in China is almost like some languages in, in the U- Europe. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the differences between Portuguese and Spanish could be as much as the one between Cantonese and Mandarin. Um, maybe even in, on, in the, on the spoken level, the difference here is even bigger. It's only that we have a unified character, a written language yeah. system to hold everything together, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my but, gosh, tell, tell me about it. Dongbeihua. Fujianhua, <laughs> Sichuanhua. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but those are similar. Those to us are yeah. like different branches of the Mandarin languages, right? But, you know, Cantonese and all that, uh, this is, 
they just have to made up word characters to to yeah. to express the the words in many cases. Um, and that fold, that kind of shapes different you know, mindsets as well. People always comment, what's the difference between, say, Beijing and Shanghai? It's huge differences. Um, mm. You know, I had a discussion like last weekend with a friend. You know, in, in Beijing, it's okay for you to chill out with friends late into night and without any purposes. And you can, you can meet a friend, like, mm. say, every day for, for a week. In Shanghai, everything is pretty much scheduled, right? You have an appointment, mm. uh, you meet an hour, and uh, it's over. Uh, if you meet a guy for like uh, every day for a whole week, there could be something wrong. E either you are in a <laughs> relationship or, you know, it's just <laughs> very different. Uh, yeah. It's a different kind of mindset. And, and Cantonese, Shenzhen, Shenzhen and Guangzhou are totally different cities, right? Shenzhen is yep. an immigrant city. Guangzhou is a very ancient city. Different, mm. different styles. Very laid back. Uh, yeah. So, so it's very different. And yeah. we just have time for one final question. And sure. I just want to turn more towards um, your newsletter, Bai Guan. Bai Guan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, what should we be looking out for in the uh, next release uh, of your newsletter? The next um, release. Uh, what, what key insights are we looking? Are we? Uh, what should we be looking out for? Sure. So it's the next release is actually a pretty serious, I would say pretty long and serious um, article. It's a translation mm. of, a, um, of a Chinese venture capitalist uh, characterization of the, yep. the China-US relations and how that's affecting investment styles. Um, it's pretty dense and serious because, but also I think we think it's super interesting because mm. it gives a historical and cultural Kind of perspective into understanding the, the 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 key question that you know why China seems not to be so-called biding the time now. Um, you know there was this debate like in the U.S. or in the in the West saying that you know China has changed uh, recently. Um, Seem to be changing. Um, it's not mm -hmm. like the Deng Xiaoping's China anymore, uh, but. But I think that article will give you a sense of, you know, actually, Pella has never changed. It's just part of the continuity of their history and culture. And there is something just, you know, quite different about China. China is not good or not bad. It's just different. And you yeah. cannot fit in, you know, other lands, other framework on, on this country. And that's it's the complex. key point of that article. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that the article is pretty good in, in, that, in that sense. Yeah. Looking we'll we'll be looking to... out for it. <laughs> yeah. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. But thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us on Business and Bubble Tea, uh, Rob. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, William. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you. Thank you so much.